All right. Hi. Hi, hi, Armin. How are you? I mean, good, it's good. an honor to be with you today. Really, it's just an, a pleasure. Thank oh. you. Thank you for having. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay, before before we get started, um, I know I'm very excited to ask you a lot of questions, but a lot of people don't know who you are and what your story is, right? So before we get into, I have you know, there's so many things I want to ask you, but can you tell people who you are? Okay, my, I'm Mohammed. I'm a public atheist in Egypt, and um, you were in Egypt. I wasn't. Yeah, I were. I I am a public atheist in Egypt actually. Now I'm in Germany. I've, right. I've escaped after appearing on yes, TV okay. shows uh, that went viral, and I started to have like crazy problems, uh, a lot of threats, a lot of problems with family. Um, That's and, a huge and, understatement. The government was after you, right? So, I mean, in Egypt, yeah, there is laws against against criticizing Islam, and there is laws against uh, freedom of speech. So, yeah, of course. I mean, right. they are after after atheists and after people like me who actually dare to think rationally and express themselves. Right. So, okay. So, people don't know, uh, know how viral this went. You went on TV. They invited you, or did you contact them in Egypt? Yeah, actually, there was an advertisement on, on a group, on a closed atheist group. Right. Uh, and, yeah, they, were, they wanted atheists from Islamic background and an atheist from a Christian background. And, like, people oppose the idea very much because it's very risky. Like, nobody want to risk their lives this way and... Right. So there was very few people who actually wanted to go. I, it, it's actually me and another guy. And uh, he's also from a Muslim background. And until the last moment, I was not going to go, like until an hour or two before the show. It right. was this other guy. But at, at some point, he decided not to, not to appear. I mean, he changed his mind. Right. And then they called me and they told me, like, they need me and, like, they have already advertised that they're going to have an episode about atheist people and stuff like that. So I went. Okay. I, I can't. And, I, yeah. Yeah. No, go on, go on, go on. I can't, but I just want to just add, like, I can't believe that they really wanted you there and they missed this. Like, for people that watch the video when you went on TV, they treated you like, like garbage. Um, and they. It, it is so and, weird because they were they and they were apologizing to the, to their audience for having an atheist on, but they wanted you. They they asked you to come on the show. <laughs> they wanted me to be. Uh, I'll tell you why they have behaved this way. I mean, okay. they wanted to behave this way anyway because they wanted me to be triggering. Okay, they wanted me to trigger people, and I was very rational and scientific, philosophical. And they did not expect that. They expected me to say things that makes people angry. Angry, right? Okay. And and my my like I was in the show in and my own ob my main objective was to actually normalize atheism. Like I want I want to be normal for us to be atheists. and don't want I want people to see us as as a devil or like someone who is like atheist people are bad, immoral. This is not who we are. And I want my friends and want I want people in Egypt, it's just people in Egypt and like everywhere in Mina would be able actually to express themselves without fear, would, would be able to say that they are atheists, would be able to express their ideologies, how they think, right. and and like the and like how they differ, like being the thing is that Islam is in control over me you now, over the Middle East generally and majority Muslim countries. And Islam is very important. Like it's everywhere. It's right. Everything. It's it's integrated with our social system. It's 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 integrated. Like in my ID, there is a Muslim in my ID. Like I'm a Muslim, and I can't change that. Like my, you can't change my Iranian Muslim. my Iranian ID ID yeah, uh, also I, says Muslim. Yeah. Yeah, so in, the religion is very important, and it just creates you, like, it affects your worldview, it affects everything in your life, how you think, how you behave. Right. So being an atheist in an, in an Islamic country means that you have very, very different views. You have, like, very different perspective on a lot of things, more right. liberal, like. So but, people, yeah, but, uh, yeah, 
people are afraid are afraid to express themselves and this is not fair and it's wrong and just prohibiting us from advancing our societies prohibiting us from like i don't know being better i guess so but but were you scared like you on and like it seems for a lot of people a lot of very ballsy to go on live tv on egypt and openly announce that you're an atheist to a public audience were you scared i was terrified 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 and i knew i knew that i might get killed i knew that why did you do it why did you do it because i was so desperate i mean the situation in egypt is like generally in islamic country is terrible when it comes to personal freedoms and the human rights i could talk about hate against gay people hate against atheist people hate about against women on the object of tying them mm. I, i could talk about i could talk about like islam is responsible in in my country for an explosive amount of birth rates like very 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 high birth rate and just destroying our economy because like the government can really uh, provide for all of these new children and it's integrated in our culture now like back then muhammad was a king or wait wait you, you're saying you're saying it's destroying our economy because um it's a teaching in islam to have more children and you're saying yes, egypt yes. egypt is suffering from overpopulation right some yes. imam said that birth control is is haram it's a sin to do birth control right. and people generally think in this way like uh god god will provide for him you don't have to have money when you have children you don't have to plan for it like god god will do the planning for you you don't have to care about that right and and this is now integrated in our culture this is now integrated in our life i i could yeah it's just crazy and the government can truly really provide for this for these people and it's destroying our economy so there was a lot of hate it's really fine hard like if you're gay it's really hard to find a date like it's really hard to find someone to fall in love with you right with and, and you you weren't at that time you weren't open uh, about being gay right you were just being open about being atheist I, no i was i was not open uh, i was never open about being gay in egypt but never uh, open. no never never which one when when do you think which one do you think would have had a bigger reaction like i mean you suffered so much and we'll get into that what happened after you went on tv live and the consequences that you had to pay for it but uh, do you think if you were if you also came out as uh, as gay do you think the the reactions to that would be worse than coming out as an atheist or or less yeah i think so i think gay people are being more persecuted than than even atheist people because yeah yeah i mean in the thing egypt, is that yeah. in egypt yeah. yeah and and the thing is that the issue with the gay community generally in egypt and like i guess it might be the same in other islamic countries is that a lot of percentage of gay people are actually religious or believe in religion mm. so the thing is that they think they believe that i mean they believe that they are sinner or perverts so it's crazy and and you can't really ask for your for your rights and you can't really um have the guts to to ask for something while you think that you are in the wrong like uh, an imam would tell them like you need to repent like i i've been i've been with people who think that they should repent and they are sinners and they are doing wrong things for for being gay and like yeah this should change um So I say I guess that Islam is not just pressuring the gay community from the outside by creating laws that imprisons us and and pressure us culturally and socially it also destroying it from the inside because like people think that they are sinners people think that they are doing something wrong and it's not very scientific they don't really ex- like a lot of them might not accept the scientific ex- explanations of right. being gay like yeah they think that it's something they could they might change or stop one day and right. like i mean i mean to be to be to be uh, uh, just uh, i just want to i mention this i don't i don't a lot of people say um it's okay to be gay because being gay is not a choice which is true but i think it's not i don't think that's the reason why it's okay even if it was a choice 
I don't understand why it would be bad if it was a choice. I don't yeah. measure what's har- what's moral and what's not based on whether it's a choice or not. I measure it based on who- if it's harming anybody. So if even if, even if you could choose to be gay, I still don't see any issue. Like a lot of people, are like oh, being gay is okay because it's a it's not a choice. So like, so what if it was a choice? Even if it was a choice, I don't see an issue with it. I don't, you know. Yeah, exactly. You're, but, you're not harming anyone. You're, yeah. you're acting within your personal freedoms. Yeah, okay, so can we, can we go back? Can we go to um, um, what? So when you were on Live TV, because I want to like introduce people to your story um, uh, more. So you uh, went exactly. on. Okay, so you went on TV, um, and by the way, a lot of people might be like, no, you shouldn't have done that. Uh, some people that live in safe countries, like, why are you taking so much risk to yourself? And I always push back against that because nobody should be, ex- you know, we shouldn't expect people, we shouldn't demand people to take risk like this. But if somebody chooses to take a risk like this, I think the only response to that is thank you. Because when people, people that live in free countries, when they tell atheists, or secularists or ex-Muslims to just don't risk it, just you know, fake it till you ma- till you make it, and you know, just keep your low profile. Um, and yeah, if you if you don't, people shouldn't demand that risk. But for, if people do decide to take this risk for the for the rest of the society, people that are so exhausted and desperate and feel like they, they need to say something or do something, you have to realize that the people. These are the these are the people that eventually make a difference. The people that li- live in free countries that enjoy democracy, enjoy secularism, enjoy fr- uh, safety and freedom, they say like, "Oh, if you live over there, don't take a risk." And they don't realize that the reason why they are enjoying th- the rights that they have, the freedom that they have, the safety that they have. They didn't get the, all of that for free. They just they you know, they're so used to it. They just think it's just handed to them. Somebody in in their past, in their history, at some point did what you did. Somebody, every right that they enjoy, every every amount of safety or security that they enjoy is because somebody at some point risked their lives, their safety, their sense of security, their freedom. That's the sacrifice that many people before them took for them today to be able to enjoy all that. And they need yeah. to be thankful to people like you that are risking them because they enjoy all of that because of people like you. So I think people that people that are just you know enjoying their safety and telling you that oh you need to you shouldn't have done that, they're just being extremely ungrateful. I think you okay. are the people that you are you are the people that like you are doing exactly what I'm doing. But you did it at a much higher risk and a much greater consequences to your safety and to your freedom than than I ever have. Like I I, I do not have the courage that you have. I, if I was in Iran, I would have kept a low profile, right? I wouldn't have done any of the things that you did in Egypt. I wouldn't have because you are you are you are courageous and I, and, I, and you are my hero. So so the only oh response the only response to what you do is thank you. Not that you shouldn't have done that. Actually, I just like to point out that I have done it for myself. I couldn't live my with myself in such like seeing such injustice happening around me and doing nothing about it. And I had a chance, and it was a chance, and nobody wanted to take this chance back then. Like nobody around me was was willing to. And um, and I felt like yeah, maybe maybe we, we, like sacrifices has to be made, and I just couldn't live. I just c- can't see my society being like this, being like keep being restricted. This all of these irrational restri- restrictions imposed on us by religion. I just can't live with that. Since I was a child, I have never really integrated or even accepted this. Even okay. like yeah, I mean, when I was eight, at some point I was agnostic. Okay, because like I had I had a very very Islamic upbringing, and like when I was six, I used to go to the mosque a lot. Like four or, or or five times a day and used to be very uh like used to memorize quran and things like that mm. so i'm exposed to this intensely since childhood and and like becoming an atheist after being so religious it just you, you can you can just feel that you need to do something to 
not not for people to to have to live and go through this because it's not easy. It's not easy to be to be strict Muslims. Really, it's it's a, it's a lot of restrictions, a lot of mental burden, a lot of psychological problems because you have to change your human nature in ways that is not useful at all. You have to live with a lot of illog- illogical stuff and a lot of things that does not make sense and does not benefit you, but you are forced to do it anyway. Because like you're afraid God will, uh, Allah will, will burn you in hell and you, and right. you have like this crazy ideas and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't want people to suffer. I, I, I have suffered myself and, and that was my, my, my motivation, mostly empathy and looking for a better world for my country and for my people. And, and that, that's why my, that's what I, I, in a way, the way I feel about it is like I've done it for myself. I, I want to live in a better world. Right. Okay. So I, was, I wasn't, yeah, that's, that's so, how I, rationali- I rationalized about it. And that's why I've done it. All right. So let's go back to your, um, so you, you went on TV, you went live, right? Uh, and it, uh, by the way, I'm going to link to it in the description because people should watch that. It was, it was amazing. Um, I, I, it was every time I watch it, I get so angry because these, That's like, you're just dramatic. sitting there. You just, yeah, it was very dramatic. You're just sitting there. You're so calmly, t- and they're trying to make you look like evil or something, and they're so desperately trying to make you like uh, act like you're spreading corruption and you're, you're like, you know, corrupting pe- people's minds and stuff. And you're talk- sitting there talking so calmly, so monotone, so respectfully, and th- this guy is like the guy. The the host is so freaking rude to you and the guy the sheikh the islamic sheikh that they have i the questions that he asks you are so i don't even understand like I, I don't even know how to describe it like he keeps asking for anything yeah he did, I mean, it wasn't okay. a, He's like, who's your, like, you're like, uh, they ask you, like, so you're an atheist, right? Like, yeah, well, why? Because there's, no, because there's no evidence for God. I couldn't, uh, I don't believe in God. And you're like, who's your father? <laughs> I'm like, what? And you're like, what does this got to anything? Like, tell me who's your father. I'm like, can we talk about, uh, athe- like, you brought me here to talk about atheism. Why are you asking me about my father? And like, you're denying your father. You do not know about, what are you fucking talking about? And, then, yeah. and the guy, and the host also goes crazy. Uh, like, uh, he acts like, uh, because he didn't want to talk about your father, like, he acts like you are d- denouncing your father. Like, I don't know. Like, they, they were trying to grab on anything to make you look like evil, and they didn't have much to go with. So just because you didn't want to talk about your personal life that's this ran with that that you're disrespecting your family by just not answering a question about your like it was so is it was the cringiest atheist I mean, interview yeah, ever seen I mean, it, was, it wasn't I, I was i was very um like i felt back then i was sitting there and i know atheist in people the atheist in egypt does not have any voice uh, or very few voices very few people talks get this opportunity to sit in there Right. So I felt like I'm very I'm representative to the community. Right. I'm I'm representing them. You and the my ch- objective. <laughs> yeah, and, and they don't get the chance to actually express themselves or anything. So my objective was very clear. Right. I wanted to normalize atheism. I wanted to show them that we are not evil. I wanted to show them that they have very, very wrong mental image about us. It is, so, they don't even understand what like what what you know what you're trying to say because you say like oh i don't believe in religion and god and they're like they his question like do you know how god created the world and like i don't like i want to like did you not hear what he said he doesn't believe in god like what he what uh, the guy is a doctor like how like i want to know how how is he a doctor his yeah, questions are so bizarre yeah. by the way when you say you wanted to normalize atheism did you get any feedback from atheists in Egypt to like did they anybody come at like did you did anybody did you hear anybody discovering atheism because of that interview or anything like that do you know what the yeah, impact I've heard, yeah I've heard that people started to reconsider like yeah some atheist people uh, like now atheists they were not back then atheists and they told me that your interview uh, like it went viral a lot of people have seen it and normally, a lot of people started to consider, uh, reconsider their face and think about it. And it had it had a lot of exposure. And like the people who, who represented religion 
in, in this setting seems to be very irrational. Didn't seem to have like, yeah, yeah. hold like an intelligent <laughs> conversation. So I guess like for them, atheism seemed a bit, um, I don't know. I want to know about that. I want to understand how I mean, those people I mean, the, 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 the host and that Sheikh guy that they had on, they did half of your job for you because you were just sitting there calmly and they were like going crazy and trying to make you look evil and anybody looking, they were, they, like anybody was that looked unbiasedly they would be like what the hell is going on this poor guy <laughs> said i didn't say anything wrong and they're just ganging up on him so i think like the way that they reacted to you made them look so ridiculous that half of normalizing atheism was done like half of the, half of it was done by how you presented yourself which was amazing but half of it was how they made themselves look so ridiculous so they did it so thanks to them as well for doing that <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> Like, they started to get angry, and yeah. my objective is, like, to have an intelligent conversation with them, okay? Right. And <laughs> if I engaged, if I got engaged in, in this anger, in this in this outrageous conversation, I would, I would just have lost, I would, uh, I would not, I would not win it, because they are in control over my, my mic, they are in control over everything, right. so this is not a game I could play, even if I wanted to, it, I wouldn't win it in it. But when it comes to rationality, when it comes to proving my point with logic and and, uh, and reason, then, yeah, I, I could do this. Like, atheists are good at doing this. Okay? But yeah. when it comes to loud voice, anger... Not all of them, but yes. Oh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> one thing I want to make... One thing I want to do, um, try to encourage more atheists, is that in the process of normalizing atheism, uh, to not go... A step farther like not to claim superiority you know what i mean no, of course. right we have our atheists have their fair share of assholes they have their fair share of racists they have their fair share of homophobes they fair, have their fair share of irrational a lot of people became atheists not because of rational uh thinking a lot of people, rightfully so, was were so tired with their religion that they just abandoned them. I'm not saying that's not a good way to live, but I mean, I don't want to make it so, look like a atheists are all rational. We have, a, but the yeah. the point the point that we're trying I, to take is like, on average, on average, we we yeah. tend to to more tend more to be logical and philosophical and yeah, and there's studies, there's studies, there's there's studies to, to show that that's true. Energy. It takes a lot of mental energy and thinking. To be able to change your religion, because most of us are apostates, I guess. I, I mean, when, especially when it comes to ex-Muslims and and the atheists in the Middle East, like we we right. were all uh, born in a religion, and <laughs> Islam is like very very heavily heavily teached, and we we yeah. Right, but the reason why I don't want to emphasize on us being more rational is because I think atheists that are not rational as well deserve protection as well. Because I think there's this, this mentality within the atheist community that, oh, you're an atheist, but you're not rational, so you don't belong in our community. But I, just, I think that even the atheists that are not rational or not skeptic or have other flaws... If they are being attacked or discriminated against because of their atheism, we need to make room for them in our community, right? So I just don't want to create the standard that we need to all be extremely rational because that's a high, that's a standard that we don't have for, for with other human rights organizations. Yeah, you know, I mean men. I mean like maybe maybe now, maybe now we we, we see like we have a lot of people who tend to be rational and things like that. But hopefully in the future uh, I can imagine a future without religion. I truly can do that. Some people just can't imagine that the future yeah, me too. would be. But I can imagine a future without religion. And and in this future, everybody will be atheist. And there will be people who are rational and there will be people who are more artistic and more creative. And like, right. yeah, there, there is diversity. And this is like, this is the future. Right. Okay. So of course, like yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, um, like have some standards that, that is not realistic and that does not represent reality right. and reflect and, it. and there are a lot of people that w uh, are don't like religion and want to come and they're looking at the atheist community. And if we all act like atheists are all like they understand science 
and they understand philosophy and all the logical fallacies, they feel like, well, I don't know any of this thing. And they feel like, they feel like, well, I guess this is not my community, right? I just want to make sure that we, we feel like, no, no, as long as you don't believe in God and religion, you're welcome here. You don't have to yes. understand biology and modern physics. No, you know, you don't believe in God. You're an atheist. Come here, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. True, yes. Yeah, I agree. And even even not, you don't have to be like, uh, I mean, like, I, I'm in debt to Atheist Republic, of course, for all of my friends, because like in, in Cairo, uh, after after being on these shows, like everybody abandoned me, everybody, literally everybody abandoned me. But my friends in Atheist Republic, they have they have stood by me, they have supported me. Oh. Um, and yeah, and we we have have a very good community and they're very inviting and anyone anyone who says that i don't believe in god and he is welcomed with us sometimes sometimes we, we even made gatherings in real life and sometimes there were people who are skeptic about their about their beliefs about their religious beliefs and they even were welcomed and and joined so it was it was a very very good and warm and inviting community. I've seen people fall in love in there and like the in atheist republic. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, in Cairo and like fall in love and decided just to continue to live <laughs> their life. Yeah, with I, I actually I know at least eight babies that were that are a result of atheist republic marriages. So. Yeah, so it's it's very very warm warm community. It's very warm society, and yeah. it's it's in, inviting to a lot of people. I mean, uh, people a lot in a lot of times like to have uh, debates about stuff. Sometimes heated debates, but but love is always always like everywhere. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is this sh- this is how I feel about it. And I really love the community, and I really love everyone in there, and I consider them my family, especially because. They have stood by me a lot and supported me a lot. You, you have supported me personally, Armin. You have, you have uh, shared things about me in your, in your podcast. You have raised awareness about our conditions in, in the Middle East. And uh, for that, I'm truly grateful to you, like forever grateful. So, well, and grateful. for creating Atheist Republic, I'm grateful <laughs> to you too, because like, it changed my life. It tra- uh-huh. literally changed my life. Uh-huh. And yeah, so just, just... Yeah, we don't have we, we accept everybody who is willing to to be to be with us, I guess, and right. accept us. So, so yeah. actually, you touched on something very important. Um, I think you said that there's, there's a lot of heated debate, uh, and I see there's a lot of times people join the different atheist communities, and then they find out that, that other than a lack of belief in God. There are many other things that they disagree with with the community that they just found, right? And some of them get discouraged and leave. But what I'm trying to do, at least with atheist republic communities, is to not just... We're we're trying to normalize atheism to the outside world, but I'm trying to also normalize disagreements within our community. Because what I'm telling people is that, you know, for... We're not going to... The world is not going to become atheist, at least not within our lifetime, right? What we... Our main mission is to convince the Christians and the Muslims and everybody else and the Hindus, uh, well, mostly the Christians and Muslims, uh, to to accept us, even with our disagreements. I mean, we do get a lot of them, con- you know, changing to it, becoming, a, a deconverting to atheism, which is great. But for the rest of them, we're trying to normalize, at least even, you know, just be religious, but normalize atheism, to accept atheists and not accept atheists that are just keep their atheism to themselves. No, because... You get to preach Islam, you get to create, we don't say we accept Muslims as long as they don't advocate for Islam. No, we accept them as friends, allies, even if they talk about Islam. A book that tells us that we could be tortured for eternity, and Christians as well, right? So, I think it's a very low standard for for them to also accept us, not, because a lot of Muslims and Christians are like, oh yeah, I accept atheists as long as they don't attack my religion. No, bullshit. Okay, you should accept us while we attack your religion, right? The thing is that your religion is already attacks us. So if you yeah. want to ban us, ban yeah. us from attacking your religion. Like maybe, maybe you should be more fair and ban your religion altogether. Right. So <laughs> but, I w- yeah. 
it's just intellectual talks. Like we have to separate between our personal relations and between our opinions and stuff like that. So like, yeah. It, exactly. Just, but, but since this is what we're trying to convince Christians and Muslims of, to accept us with our disagreements, I'm telling atheists within our community is that if we are, if this is what we're advocating, we need to practice what we're preaching. We need to have left-wing atheists, right-wing atheists, and we need to accept each other with our disagreements, right? We need to have, you know, different, many different atheists from all sides, all political ideas. And if we can get, if we can't get along with our disagreements, how can we tell the rest of the world to accept us with our disagreements, right? Exactly. So, so exactly. heat. We need to have, and I'm not saying don't bring your heated debates in our community. No. Bring your heated de- debates in our community. Enriching, intellectually enriching. Exactly. Like I like to go on that. Yeah, it, it just makes me a better thinker. It makes me think better. Yes. So I, I enjoy. I enjoy it. It's just good thing. And yeah, I mean. So, what are some heated debates that people have in the? Is this uh, mostly in the Cairo consulate of Atheist Republic? Uh, sometimes, yeah, they have debates about. Uh, I don't know, for instance, like, you know, the Middle East is very male-dominant society. Yeah. So uh, you might you might have debates about uh, women rights. You might have debates about sexism. You might have debates about sexual freedoms, things like that. Right. So it's, it's like we are changing, and it, it's a process. It's a process, and it's not really easy to shake off all of that, I don't know, baggage of of the culture and the things that you have learned since you are a child, it takes time for you to just to transition from being a religious person to, to be to be someone who, who is like, I don't know, kind of free. It's, it might be a lifelong process, just free from all the things that you have been taught since childhood and that does not really make sense and that is irrational and it's destructive in a way. Right. So, I mean, I guess it's like groups like Atheist Republic is very important for that because it, it focuses on the social aspects and it helps new atheists to transition and to de- to adapt to their new re- reality and things like that. I remember when I first became an atheist, I, I, I just had, had very, tr- I was very troubled with my moral compass. Like I thought, I thought I, I'd be like, yeah, so the only thing that is preventing me from doing that thing is religion and now religion gone and i'm gonna be a monster but then later i found myself the same good thing i do i like i I, i'm i'm charitable like like nobody in the streets asked me ask me for money and i would i'd never turn them down and in egypt this happens a lot because the economical situation is not very good so i'd never turn people down and i and i found i realized that even after becoming an atheist I, i do the same thing it didn't change. Mm. It was the good, the good, the empathy was in me. The empathy was in me. Right. And, and like back then, I was thinking I'm doing it for, 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 to go to heaven. And now I'm, I'm doing it to have a better community to, because I'm human and I relate to, the, to them. And like I would, I, I, well, I, if I was in a situation where I needed help, I would like others to help me. Right. So, so uh, yeah. Go on, sorry. I have a. I, I want to go back to what happened after. Okay, so we keep going back to your interview because I have my questions here, but then we get distracted by something. But after the interview was over, you mentioned that you lost a lot of your friends. Some of them uh, even ate. Yeah, go on. I lost all of my friends. All, all of them. your friends. Some of them, yeah, I lost everyone. It, it was not. And easy. It, some of these were atheists. Uh, I didn't lose my atheist friends, but the, some of them just uh, wanted to stay away because, of because the, they were yeah. afraid. Yes. Yeah, and I understand it. I mm. totally understand it, and it makes perfect sense. So I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sad about it. I understand it's for their protection, and it, it makes sense in a country like Egypt, where, where they could be easily a target just for knowing me. And this, um, hap- this happened, the interview happened when... Um, before atheism was became illegal in Egypt, right? This was before that. Uh, uh, actually, it, yeah. Right now, right now in Egypt, we have uh, a blasphemy law, like we call it blasphemy law, but it's a law that prohibits uh, criticizing Islam. Mm-hmm. So if you if you criticized Islam, you could go to prison for about 
I don't know, up to five years. Five okay? years. Mm. Yeah, we, we have that law in there, and like there are people serving times out of that law. And uh, like, if you're a Muslim, officially a Muslim, you can't do anything about it. Like, you can't change being a Muslim in, in your ID or your official documents. Right. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, you could you could change to be a Muslim. But once you're a Muslim, yeah. you're a forever Muslim. You right. can you can't because like if you change it, if you change your religion, you should be killed. In, right. And Azhar and the Islamic organizations. Hadith Bukhari. Yeah. yeah. Bukhari yeah. is right in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's written yeah. in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's written. It's written everywhere, and it happened uh, during during uh, Muhammad time, and it happened afterwards. Right. And there was wars about it because a lot of people, when Muhammad died, wanted to leave Islam, but but the there was a war, and they lost. And yeah, and and the thing is that you can't do it officially. You can you can't change your religion officially if you're a Muslim, and this is problematic because. You have, you have. If, if you're a Muslim, then you must be uh, governed by sh- by Sharia in certain aspects. Because, like this marriage between between the mosque and the state is is very it's, it's very strong in Egypt and uh, in in like Middle Eastern countries generally. And so, it's, so there is not there is no real separation between the mosque and the state. And this need to happen. And the law in the laws, like you will have. For instance, in inheritance, you're a Muslim, then your daughter has to be has has to have half her brother, half half an inheritance of her brother. When it comes to marriage, uh, like if you if you are an atheist, but you can't really change your ID to be an atheist, so you you have you have and you want and you fall in love like if a Muslim girl, an atheist Muslim girl, fall in love with a Christian guy, you can't really marry because like. It's it's prohibited. It's socially prohibited, yeah. and it's not ahlul kitab. You know, the girl needs to yeah. be ahlul kitab. Yeah, uh, but exactly. okay, but but okay. So I I know these laws, but the the law uh, that I'm just to be very you know specific about what the trouble that you were facing. There is a law against specifically against uh, insulting Islam. But yes. at that time that you were having no, an interview, yeah, the thing is, the law is not just insulting Islam; it's just saying I'm an atheist because one, two, three. Then you're like in, legally, you're you're in a way creating a divide between between. People. Oh, okay. So that I, so I completely misunderstood this because okay, so the, after after a couple of years after your interview, there was a push for a law to just make atheism outright illegal, right? Yeah, this was I mean, a few years later, but, but I want to know about the situation of the what the laws were at the time that you had that interview. So at the time that you're having an interview, there was no law that says atheism is illegal, but anything, I, but any saying anything against Islam was illegal, right? And saying so, you're saying that saying anything against Islam didn't have to be insulting. Just announcing that you don't believe in Islam was enough. To be considered blasphemous, right, and become be against yeah. the law. Yeah, because you're in a way you're creating divide, and this is illegal. Like mm-hmm. you're you're asking people to leave their face or whatever, and this right. is illegal. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the law. Why that, would they uh, it's, Why would they invite atheists to come on TV and talk about their atheism, knowing that this is against the law? Yeah. I mean, it's a media. It's, no. it's it's a media channel, and they want views. And you and people like when people get triggered, like see this blasphemous atheist. Why he's talking about our prophet bad, and he's talking about things like that bad, and like people would just gain views, you know. And right. the, and that that was their goal. And then at the end, the 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 show should be like the host and the sheikh should be heroes because they fight this evil. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, yeah. yeah just uh, thank you for protecting us from those evil people <laughs> to destroy our, um, yeah, our morals and our societies and, st- right. and, and stuff like that. So this was the narrative. The thing is that I was not evil because I'm, I'm not evil. And the thing is that we are good people and we are trying to make our societies better. And we are trying to lose a lot of irrational restrictions that is lo- lowering our quality of life and lowering our society's quality of life. All right, but, okay, but but going back to, to the laws and stuff, there was there, you were taking two different risks: one from the government, but one also from people, right? 
Did, yeah. Did it's you get any? Death. Did you get? Oh yeah, this is what I was gonna ask. Did you get any death threats? Yes. Yeah, a lot of this, like, there was people on social media discussing who should kill me, whether a private citizen should just go and kill me, or we should, like, uh, the government should should be responsible for killing me, and it was, yeah, it, I've seen stuff that is terrifying, really, and some people who knew me in real life, who, who had threatened me and stuff. And knew where you live. Me where I live, and, and I was, uh, like, I spent sleepless nights in fear, to be honest, and, uh, like night, I spent nights sleepless and in fear out of this. So yeah, so there was that legal thing. There was the social pressures. Like um, after the show, like right after the show, um, I, I was going home and I was I was feeling very down. Of course, I mean the driver. Uh, like in order to go to the to this place, I I had a car that that delivered me. And mm. they were, they were Studi- like, the, studios, I, I went, the studios car. Yeah. Okay. The studios car. I, the driver, well, yeah. Of course, while I was going out of the studios, there was some people cheering and like, yeah, uh, you see, you deserve it. You're, you're, you're bad. You like, you, oh, they were you cheering. Think, you know? They were cheering, cheering the, the, the host. The yeah, host. Because, okay. Right. Host. Like the and people in the studio other- were cheering against you. Honestly. Yeah, oh my but there was. I thought I thought the, I thought the stereotypes were was, was that Arabs were supposed to be, um, you know, great hosts, and they were tr- treating their guests oh. amazingly. They treated you like garbage, like it was so oh, unbelievable. Yeah, they did. They did, <laughs> and and I think in a way, to be honest, uh, he he have done it because it, for a lot of reasons, of course, he doesn't he doesn't want to lose his audience because like people like you're you're providing him. Uh, a, a platform and he's actually he's actually making good arguments and like yeah so you're in a way complicit with him so right. he couldn't afford so he, to lie, he didn't he, like he noticed that you weren't demonizing yourself effectively and if he, he thought like if i don't lash out at him right now people are going to be like what the hell did you just do you just in- normalized atheism so he was like i need to i need to keep my job and i need to save face so i'm just going to go on a crazy mode and say like um but and the, you were mentioning uh, i didn't let you finish the driver on the way back home the driver was also attacking you driving you know and the exactly. car he made, he made a fight with me and he didn't he didn't d- d- uh, deliver me home. He actually left me in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, I'm glad, shit. I'm glad. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, my God. That, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that nothing bad happened. Like, it could have been escalated more than this. Oh, my uh, God. So, like, I, I was, go, I was I there. You to go get mental, uh, mental help, like, they, they go see a psychiatrist or something, right? That's what they... That's because yeah, you're an that's atheist. What, you're that's that's their advice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, he did that like yeah. five or six times on the show. Like you, like go get some, go seek mental. He before even telling you to go seek mental uh, mental help uh, with a psychiatrist, he would ask you if you already have. Like, okay, so you're an atheist, right? So you're mentally there's something wrong. You have you seen a psychiatrist? Like he expected you to be like, yeah, I'm an atheist and I'm seeking help and treatment for it. <laughs> like what the. <laughs> Yeah, it was, yeah. it was both, like it was so funny if it wasn't tragic oh my god um yeah i felt like he's trying he can't he can't really he can't really deal with anything i'm saying like with the information the fact so he's trying to attack me personally right and like yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't discuss me you should discuss the the, the ideas i'm saying and um because every one of us is different like every atheist have have his own story have his own background have his right. own life and we're normal people, and we're ha- coming from different backgrounds, different education levels, different everything. And, I mean, like, discussing me wouldn't do any favor to my cause, because, like, I- I'm, I- my- I'm-, I'm my own case. Like, my history is my own history. It's not anyone else's history. Right. So, it, it-, it didn't, it-, it wasn't, it wasn't productive for me to discuss my personal life. It didn't make much sense. Yeah. And, uh, how is it yeah. You know, this is what they do. They always try to, when they don't have any arguments against you, they want to change the whole story about you specifically, right? If they could yeah. find any flaws in your life, that I know what he, I know. Okay, he uh, he started asking about your father, and you were like, "What the fuck?" You were like, "Why are you t- asking me about this?" And I kind of knew what he was trying to do. He was trying to find something, some family issues or anything, and just. 
instead of arguing against you, just pin everything on that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I see where the problem. I see why you're an atheist, right? This is a tactic that many people use. Like, uh, they just try what, to change. That's why I've seen it that it's irrelevant because my story is my own story. It's not yeah, anyone. Yeah. Else. Like, yeah, what is common between us is that we reject uh, belief, like, reject uh, God existence because, like, there's no evidence that God exists. Right. And, yeah, in my way, he made, like, the driver, in my way back, the driver made a fight and he left me in the middle of the road. I went home back, this, back, not back, I went back home and I was truly terrified and I was feeling ashamed and I was feeling like what I've done to myself, what I have done to my future, like, my life is ended. And in a way, uh, in a way that like appearing in this show, despite the, I mean, it's a social suicide. It's mm. it, it affects your your whole life, like your job, your 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 family, your your well being, your personal safety, like everything changes. Right. And I realized this, and I I went back, and I was, I don't know, I, I really hoped that they do not upload it. I really hoped that they don't really upload it to YouTube, okay. and. They did upload it, and I, I I remember falling asleep this night, and I don't know what will happen. I don't know how I'm gonna live anymore. I don't know everything changed now. Um, so it it went a while went, and I I waked up to find people messaging me about that. People supporting like atheist people, providing their support, defending me in the comments, and I mean this has changed everything. This really changed everything for me, and I just felt like I'm not alone. And I felt like, like there are people like me and supporting me. They are family for me uh. because I knew at this point that I lost everyone. I knew at this point that I don't have anyone anymore, and they were there for me. And I would thank Atheist Republic for that again. Uh. <laughs> so that, yeah, because because all of my friends in Cairo, I, I've got to know them from Atheist Republic. I've, wow. intri- I've got introduced them from Aces So, oh, like, yeah. I, I, I'm, I thank you again for your creation <laughs> because, I mean, you, you were, you created them. Uh, you created, I guess, when you were created Aces Republic when you were back when you were in Iran, and you, I guess, you understand the isolation. You understand how you feel when you're alone and there is no one you could really connect to. There is one, no one you could you could share things with because, like, in a very Islamic. Um, environment in a very Islamic society, you're very different. As an atheist, you are yeah. very different. You think and see stuff in a very different manner. So it was very, it was very important to me, and it, it helped me a lot, and it changed my life. Literally, changed my life. To find people who are like me. Well, I and, mean, uh, you're sorry, go on. And uh, I mean, I, I would like to carry on about s- something more about atheist public that you guys have good rules. Like you, you try to. Uh, I don't know. Moderate, moderate the conversations in ways that ensures ensure uh, respect and civility, and this is not always the case. So it, not always the case online. Okay, and the thing is that you also have that thing that it's about Asias. It's not about Asias. It's about us. It's about us as a community. It's about us to meet to to go to meetups to to meet other people. I've never seen that anywhere else. I especially in, in a country like Egypt. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's, it's more about us to see each other in real life, to have social connections, to have social ties. It's not just about debating, uh, debating religion and things like that. So that's what I really love, the social lives that it created for me. To it's not feel alone, it. to feel, to yeah, see exactly. the other people, exactly. to find other people that are there with you. Right. Exactly. I mean... So, uh, to be it, it, one thing that you're very right when I started in Iran is it was purely for selfish reasons and it's exactly what you're saying. Uh, uh, it was because I felt so alone, and I did when I started Atheist Republic. It wasn't it wasn't for it to become this global community that it has now become. It was just self s- simply for finding other people like me. It was very selfish goal that I had because I just felt like I didn't know any other atheists before I started the community online, right? But yeah, um, but okay, so going back to your, uh, when did the, I, I noticed somewhere in your story that the police came to your house. Was it the police or was it? Uh, yeah, back then, I, yeah, actually the police came to my house, but back then I wasn't really like when, when we posted this info, 
I wasn't really sure why they came. I, actually, they came. They have searched my cell phone. They have looked at my ID. Mm. They have took my name. And I wasn't truly sure if there is anything uh, like more will happen. And uh, thankfully, uh, nothing more happened because I just kept very low profile. And mm. I will tell you why I had to keep very like my account was closed all of these years. I didn't make any comments. I didn't make any interviews about the interviews. I didn't make even a YouTube or Twitter post. Mm. And and there was a reason for that, um, and I think it was in a way. I mean, in a way, I was forced to do this, and it was the right thing to do because I might have not been able to survive the whole situation if if I went, if I had more exposure and went, and carried on uh, in being public in Egypt. Um, yeah, right. I could I could go back to the. So the, after the show, so people started to, to show support, and actually some Muslim people have started to show support, and that was incredible. It's unprecedented. It never yeah. happened for for religious people to actually support an atheist. Right. But yeah, so that that was that was amazing. See, but before and, you continue, this is I just want to really stress this because this is what we are what we are hoping for, right? Uh, we like we do count people that abandon religion and they become atheists. That's a huge win for us. But that's a lot of people think that's the only win for us. No, normalizing atheism. We do a, a, a much bigger campaign, much bigger circle is that for for Muslims and Christians to accept us as atheists, not atheists that keep quiet, accept atheists that are even outspoken against their religion. That's that is the the main fight that we're having right to become to normalize not just atheism but also atheists critical of religious views normalizing criticizing religion and we have had success we have had we do have and again when i say this there are many muslims that support atheist republic because they are they do not agree with our atheism but they think it's it's ridiculous that atheists uh, are the way they're treated around the world. There are many Christians that support Atheist Republic because they see what we're trying to do. They don't believe in it, uh, what they don't agree with us in our in our fight against Christianity, but they don't they don't accept the way we're treated. And when I say we want these atheist allies, Muslim atheist allies, Christian atheist allies, Jewish atheist allies, Hindu atheist allies, I'm not saying that we're not going to stop shitting on their religion. Okay. We're going to continue shitting on their religion. And the reason why they're, they are our allies is because they, we should be allowed to shit on their religion, right? Actually, they, it's illegal they, in Germany. They don't, they don't make that a condition. They don't, the Muslim <laughs> Christians that are our allies, they do not make us remaining silent a condition for their support. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we we need their acceptance, and we need them to accept that we're gonna criticize the religion. We're gonna we're gonna say why we think it's a bad idea. We're right. gonna say why we became atheists, why we had left religion. We need them to accept that and not be triggered by it. And this is very important. <laughs> or even even it's okay. No, actually, I, my my standard is even lower than that. Be triggered by it. It's fine. Just don't demand me to shut up because you're triggered by it, right? I can't. Agreed. You can't. You can't really control what you're triggered by, right? It's okay to be. You know, a lot of. I notice a lot of atheists say like, "Oh, you shouldn't be offended." No, be offended is fine. Just don't expect anything from me because you're offended, right? Like, yeah, I, I mean, in a way, yeah. not not be triggered in a way that halts the dialogue between us because right. it's very important. It's very important to have civilized, calm, rational dialogue. It, because, like this way, good ideas will thrive. Because, right. like in a, in an environment where everybody's angry, nothing good will be achieved. Well, I I, I I think atheists that have suffered a lot from religion, I I think they do need to lash out. I think is, um, I yeah, think I mean, anger is justified, right? I, and the thing is that. Fun. It's justified and it's okay for you to express that anger. Um, and I think that what, you know, you're saying like, oh, there's no, that's not, that. I, I don't think, I think there needs to be all kinds of dialogue. Like some people want to have calm dialogues, have calm dialogues. If you want to lash out and be angry, lash out and be angry. But the, the point that I make to Muslims and Christians is that if you're not, if you're seeing our anger or our ridicule or mocking your religion, 
you looked for it because we didn't then push this on you. We posted this on our Facebook pages, on our YouTube channel. We wrote uh, in our books, in our blogs, in our podcasts. Like, we, you could simply ignore it, right? Uh, it's, uh, if you prefer to like, if you prefer to talk to somebody that is talking to you calmly, go find that guy, right? But if but the guys that are, that are angry and they're just expressing their anger, if you don't like that, just don't don't consume that content. It's very easy, right? I agree. I agree. I, I just like to point out that the situation in the West is very different than in Middle East. Right. The thing is that when atheists go out and start to say things like. Muhammad was a pedophile. Muhammad was whatever. Muhammad was a warlord. He had sex slaves. He was the, like the worst. I understand this way. It's rational. It's right. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and they are saying facts, actually. It's but, therapeutic. You think, because you're yeah. saying the things that you never were allowed to say, right? Even uh, if you're not, sometimes you're not even trying to change mind. You're like, I'm just going to say it because I wasn't never allowed to say these things. I'm just going to express yeah, myself now. I, Nobody can yeah. stop me, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, experiencing freedom. I, I mean, it's it's very important, but I will have two takes on this. The first thing, in back in Middle East, when, when people do this, what happens is that Muslim people are very powerful in there, of course. You know that they are majority, they are, have the law, they have everything, that the government is next to them, everything. Mm. So a, the, the result of that is that atheist people cannot find anyone to protect them and they cannot find any protection in there. So when some atheist people who manage to be famous and start to say stuff that trigger that triggers the Muslim population in the Middle East or in my country, Egypt, as a as a consequence of that, atheist people hate and aggression toward us start to increase. Ooh. And and that that thing like the police does not really protect us. Like if you if you're an atheist, you might and and went to them, you might be like, okay, you're an atheist. Or I might you might be imprisoned for that anyway. So like, you, but that's not, oh my god. So you're saying we need to police our. When it comes, I what? mean, I, I I mean in Europe and in the West, it's different, of course, right. because like people are more understanding, people are sophisticated enough, generally and well educated enough, mm. and have this tolerance in them. To, to, to not not kill you for just voicing your opinions. I know there is extremists in the West. I know there is Muslim extremists in the West. Right. But most people, the law, the system, are, are, are understanding right. and smart and rational and protects us. It protects our freedom of speech. Right. This is not the situation in, in the Middle East. So if, if we manage to have a channel or a, or, or a way to voice our opinions, it must be in a way that mm. does not really trigger them against us. Because when they get triggered, they don't just get angry. They might just... start to have violent actions. Right, right. Okay. So you're saying so, so you're saying that when you if you're take it, take account uh, the community that you're talking to and the consequences of the way that you're talking to them, right? But you're not telling that to me in Canada, right? Because I, 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 I have zero filters. <laughs> no, no, I think you're English speaking. Because the thing is that when you do it in English, like already, already someone learned English and and searching for English content, he's exposed to the Western culture. He's exposed to this freedom of speech thing. So right. he should understand that what is like this. Like I mean, as a Muslim, you could you could see almost. A lot of aspects of the Western life blasphemous and wrong and just outrageous for you. So yeah. in order for you to learn English and start to be open to the Western culture, you have you have to, to be to be accepting to this, to be accepting to their values, to freedom of speech, and it should be universal values, to be honest. And uh, and people like me and a lot of people in the Middle East are in prisons trying to do, to to have these rights, to have the freedom of speech rights. Right. Uh, yeah, and another thing, I'm not sure about Germany, but there is a blasphemy law in Germany. Uh, yeah, but is it, but it's not enforced, is it? Uh, I'm, not... I'm, I'm not I'm not 100% yes. sure, but I guess there is a blasphemy law, and I'm, I need to be careful also <laughs> in a way. And either either way, I've I've like yeah, I mean the thing, but the blasphemy law here is kind of beautiful. Like it's it's not in the Middle East. It's the thing that uh, as far as I've read, uh, I'm not sure if it's enforced or not. But you are allowed to criticize religion. There's no problem with that. But you're not allowed to curse or insult or, or mock 
but you're allowed to have rational conversation. Bullshit. I think. Okay, so if I was, I think. I'm not talking- percent sure because i don't speak right. german yet okay but, but if that was if that was the case i think that would be a case for actually insulting religion i mean i would you know i would be more interested in insulting religion if it was a law against it than if there wasn't like there would be less no, there would be a less there would be less of a point trying to insult religion yes. if it was free to do so i think there's more there's more a case for for you actually going out out of your way to insult it if this if it's been mandated by right law. Right now I'm off, I'm no. right now actually I am no. still waiting for the court. Okay, not you, not you, <laughs> no, no, I, German I citizens, you. German <laughs> citizens. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't, Becky, and, you don't do that. And, and not just not just this. Like I'm living in camps, and I could tell you a, a story when when I first came to Germany, really? I've spent about a week. In Frankfurt Airport, there's a residence, a camp in there. It's some sort of a nice prison. Nice prison. Uh, but like, yeah, I mean, you have TV in there. You have some some entertainment. Uh, but yeah, you can't get out. I mean, if you're shaving your your uh, your beard, the security officer should be next to you. Huh. And yeah, it's it's something like that. There is cameras everywhere. The security team is very active. And I went to Germany and I, I felt like, yeah, I'm free and like I could. So people asked me, why are you here? Why are you seeking German protection? And I was like, because I'm an atheist and like I done that and I done this and told them everything. And this was a mistake, Armin. This was a true mistake. Why? Because like, yeah, I mean, people come in here from the Middle East with the same Middle Eastern mindset. I mean, they don't, they don't really change. Uh, I had, uh, I mean, there are people who were like telling me, the prophet used to used to kill people like you oh, in the camp in the germany in the refugee camp <laughs> yeah yeah okay okay so let's let's just let's just explain what you just said because i thought it was a mistake for the government and, okay so you went you came there and you said like i need uh, by the way i was going to get to your escape at some point we'll get to that right now um yes. you get you, you're in germany right now but but because you already mentioned it, let's go there uh you mentioned that you need protection because you're an atheist but you're saying that was a big mistake because in the refugee camp that you're in, there's a lot of Muslims there, right? But yeah, there was a lot of Muslims, and and yeah, they were not very nice. They was they were not very okay. Nice well, but how did they find out? Like you were telling the officers that. I how did they find? When they asked me, like when they asked me why you're here, huh? and I told them, and <laughs> and that was a mistake actually. Oh, you told other refugees. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I told okay. Other refugees. Oh my God! No. Okay, but what happened? Like, what, 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 what did they do? Yeah, like, they told you, like they were not very nice. Some, I got like a guy, a Muslim guy from Pakistan. He was like, um, he was like, you want us to hate you, right? But we're not that. Like he was that serious. He didn't say it in a in a joking way. You want us to hate you, but we're not gonna do it on the cameras. And like, because, and there is cameras. you want us to hit you? Yeah, because that's, I was, I was, I, was, I, I like. Like when they knew that that I'm an atheist, they had they wanted a debate. They wanted a debate about Islam, and I was like, okay. I mean, I, I, I it, for me it came out of nowhere. I didn't expect it coming really because like I was having a very normal, calm, rational debate about about nature of religion, about why I left Islam and stuff like that, and then I started to feel aggression and a little bit of bullying. And it was not very nice. It was not very nice. Like I, I, I used to uh, to go to sleep. I, I tend to sleep early, like at nine. And they used to have their breakfast uh, because they are fasting for Ramadan at nine. So uh, they would go to the room. They would just keep chatting while I'm trying to sleep. They would just eat and like make noise. And it, it was not, they were not very nice. And other guys that from Yemen. Wait, wait. He, You're going Yemen. Because yeah, he was like the prophet kills people like you. Used to kill people like you, and uh, I mean, yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't a very. Wait, smart and, but the, the Pakistani guy is, scares me the most. He said because uh, he said he wants to hit you, but he's going to do it not in front of the cameras. Did no, you report he, he, him? Yeah, he he said yeah. Actually, he said that uh, as you said, uh, you want us to hit you in camera, right? We're not gonna. Yeah, he's not gonna do it. Like because because uh, of he's not. Yeah, I mean, so I imagine if there was no cameras, he might have been very tempted to actually. Did you tell the officers there about the security threats to your to your 
No, I, I did not because I just I just wanted. Yeah, I didn't want to to have more enemies than I wanted. I didn't want to have. Um, but, okay. Yeah. I, I just wanted to be nicer. Oh my god. Uh, and and it wasn't very nice to stay. They started to harass me a little, and I'm glad that I didn't stay there long. Um, so I went here, and like the same thing. There's a lot of Middle Eastern people. I, I would say that the camps, in a way, is a part of the Middle East or German soil. Uh, so. Um, well, okay, okay, let's repeat that. You're saying the refugee camps is just like a part of the Middle East on German soil. Yeah, I think so, and I believe that. Uh, so you I still haven't myself. experienced Germany yet. Uh, I I didn't. I, I'm. I don't think that I'm allowed to actually leave the camp that I'm in. Uh, I no, I'm allowed to leave the camp, but I'm not allowed to leave the city. Only thirty kilometers uh, um, out of the city, and it's a small city. It's not. It's not very big. Uh, so I didn't really have had this experience, the true experience with whole Germany, but uh, I have some experience. It's very organized, and I really love it. Uh, I oh, love, yeah. I love German. The, the Germans are church. very organized. Very, very organized, and I really appreciate it. And sometimes I talk to German people, and like you're very, yeah, I really, I really admire that you're so organized and so well, uh, well, everything has a very, very well defined system and everything. And you're like, ah, oh, we're too organized. I was like, no, you're amazing. You don't want to see the opposite. And like, yeah, and there is nature everywhere. People are always nice. I, I had all my experience with all my all of my experiences with German people are nice. Even back then when I was in Ecuador before coming to Germany, I I had I had like German tourists were kind of majority in the hostel I was in. And like I've made a lot of friends and uh, there was one guy who was is one of the best people I've ever met. He he helped integrated me in the Western society. In there, he engaged me in activities. It was the first time I go to hike. It was the first time I go to a club and dance. It was the first time I I drink. I eat pork. I, I it was it was everything. Like yeah, it was an amazing week. And uh, uh, thanks to Oliver, like from Germany. Uh, that's nice. I wish you. <laughs> okay, we're. we're uh... Can is it safe to say which city are you in right now? Is it safe to say that? I'm not sure if it's safe. Okay, uh, don't say I it. Okay, because I was gonna say because I was gonna say if anybody is near you, uh, to come and like show you a good time. But if it's not safe, so let's not tell anybody anything. Okay, so to keep that to yourself. Can Can you tell me how how you managed to get out and why you decided to leave? Okay, uh, I could go back to the timeline after after the shows. Uh, I I could I could jump to this, of course. Of course, there was a lot of threats happening, like death threats. So I, w- I didn't, I didn't have a lot of liberty at going out. Um, I, I just like to, to say one thing about the camps. I think, I think we should have good integration courses, like courses that until now I didn't have any integration courses, and maybe because I don't know German, maybe because like I'm so early in the process. But I think there should be very, very intense and good integration courses to teach uh, refugees and to teach new people in here about the culture, the Western culture, the German culture, how system in here, uh, how how everything works in here. So this is very, very important because the thing is that some people come with this with the same mindset, with the same ideologies that 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 led for their home to to be destroyed at the first place. Right. Uh, do, do you think there, there should be stricter laws on who they let in? I mean, I, fi- I don't think they should have let that Pakistani guy that wanted to hit you, to, or that guy that says, uh, like... Or pro- I mean, he, he was not in. I mean, it's still a longer process. Right. And, and yeah, of course, I mean, of course they should not let extremists or people who might do trouble in here. Uh, they should only allow people who are deserve protection and people who are, uh, like... Are not because you know there are. I think they should. I think they should make it mandatory for you to watch two hours of gay porn uh, before you get to before you because if <laughs> like you have to. <laughs> yeah. Watch... <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if if, if you can if you can tolerate this, then we you're you're then you should be able then then you. Because you, you... terrible stories like there was uh, in the newspaper a Yazidi girl oh. uh, and. Yeah, this lady found the guy who used to rape her back in Iraq, uh, found him in here, and I guess she left afterwards. Uh, so, so yeah, of course, there, mu- there must be stricter rules, I guess. 
and and like I mean honestly, uh, like it's a very touchy topic because even if if you have someone who is kind of extremist and or have ex- like he didn't commit crimes but he has this extremist ideology, I wouldn't give up on him because I I wouldn't send him back to die. To be honest, like personally, I would just yeah. I would just like try to change the ways they think. I would challenge their ideologies. I would at least make them know that they are not, uh, that such such way of thinking is not welcome and should not be tolerated. Mm. Uh, so, I, so, yeah, because I don't think that you could just, I mean, it's in a way it would be equivalent to kill people. I just, I just, just yeah, but I just think it's, 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 a, it's such a big burden on the Germ, uh, on German taxpayers and german society i mean it's i mean yeah. it's it, as an individual i feel it's fair for us to want to care for everybody and not give up on anybody but i don't think like i don't think it's fair to make an entire society be responsible for some people that may very likely won't change their mind um and you know, I mean, every each one of us could be a humanitarian, you know, advocate with our own resources. I just don't think it's fair to demand other people's resources for the good deeds that we think needs to be done. You know what I mean? Like, they these are people I that think, have paid so much, uh, so much of their tax into uh, what? I can I can only talk about my my myself personally. It's just really hard for me to give up on people. On people. Yeah, yeah, really? I. I I'm, I agree with you. I don't. I don't want us to give up on anybody, but to go then use other people's resources and taxes and uh, for. Should, yeah. I mean, it's Germany is a democratic country, and right. it's, it's it's a matter of German people to decide who right. they support, who they do not. Right, right, and right. Yeah, it's it's their right to, to do. I mean, I'm I'm not demanding anything. Like they are helping people, and they are gracious for doing that, and um, for that. Millions, I guess, a lot of people are grateful, mm. and personally, I'm grateful. Unfortunately, there are some people who who are not. There are some people, yeah. Unfortunately, this is the fact, and uh, the way to deal with them, I guess, uh, I don't, I don't really have have very effective solution to that because right. some of the solutions might be a bit cruel and just. It's really hard for me to take such decisions. I guess uh, maybe I'm not. I wouldn't make a good politician. The solution is for you to help us make more Arabic content and uh, with Atheist Republic. That's the solution, and then eventually Urdu and Malay and Bengal. If we ever get more resources at Atheist Republic, I have so many plans. Hopefully, but... hopefully you'll get it because you deserve it because you're doing a great favor to humanity. Uh, really. Uh, thank um, you. Um, so, so tell us how did you get out? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, I have spent like this year. I was under a lot of pressure. I, I it was it was crazy, and like I went I went originally. I mean, like we have tried a lot of methods to get to get out. Uh, I I have applied visa for the United Kingdom, and it didn't it didn't. Um, they have rejected it because they said that I don't have a good reason to come back to Egypt afterwards. Uh, oh. It was for a conference. And then for another conference uh, in Netherlands, and the same reason for rejection was, like, we're not sure that, that you're going you're gonna to come back afterwards. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that if, if I'm going as an activist, then activists are persecuted in Egypt. They know this, and they are on higher risk of not actually coming back. Mm. Uh, I had friends uh, in the European delegation mission in Egypt, and I talked to them and asked them for help. And the thing is that uh, Western embassies doesn't really want conflict with with the Egyptian government. So by aiding activists, you're you're creating. Which wait, who doesn't want uh, conflict with the Egyptian government? Western embassies. Which ones? Fucking cowards. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the thing. It's just they're 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 actually like if they started to have problems with, with the Egyptian government, maybe their the diplomatic relationships mm. uh, might might not be as good. They might be restricted. The, the work they they do might not be able to. They might not be able to to actually do their work. Mm. 
So they don't have absolute power in there. So it's not really easy for them to actually to help. Right. And Egypt is like right now having a strong government, very, very like military strong government. So it's it's very, they are pulling it together. It's like there is no division in the government. There is nothing. And every anyone who, who opposed usually go to a dungeon somewhere and this is the, their story. He would never see, see the sun again. Right. It's in. That's it. So it's, it yeah. has the highest. Is it Egypt or Turkey that has the highest number of um, reporters in prison? I guess I, I would say Egypt definitely. If, yeah. if we're gonna compare, like, right. there's no way it could be any any <laughs> Turkey. Like, right. Yeah, because like it's their national sport right now, like imprisoning reporters right. for terror <laughs> for every uh, terrorism. Ter- like terrorism is the easiest thing to accuse people of these days in Egypt, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You... So, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't really easy to get to get in a, in a direct way, and uh, I I had limited resources, of course, you know, about the GoFundMe and people had donated money, and I didn't have I had the limited resources, so I couldn't. Oh yes, yeah. Sam Harris retweeted your GoFundMe, right? Yeah. Thank, and, thank and you, Sam for, Harris. Thank you, Sam Harris, because like w- without this retweet, I I would have never made it out. Uh-huh. And I, I might like really, yeah. It would, I, I would have like very miserable fate right now. Mm. So, uh, thank you for the Paris. Uh, anyways, uh, and thank you for a lot of people. Not, not like uh, Melissa Shane, Troy Grano, you Armin, uh, the International Humanist Ethical Union, uh, Mariam Namazi. A lot of people. A lot of people have helped with advices, with guidance, with with connections, with networking, and like it's it's heartwarming to see this amount of people like collaborating together just to help another human being without without like thinking about uh, heaven or 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 reward or anything, just like doing it because we're human and we 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 have empathy toward each others and and that's it. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's just it's just amazing and inspiring. <laughs> Yeah, and and like I, d- I didn't have really uh, any 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 kind of help in getting out. So the first thing, the tickets was kind of expensive. I knew that I cannot go to a Western country from uh, from a Middle Eastern uh, airport. Mm. There is like it's it's not just because like I'm an atheist. It's just also because there is like restrictions upon traveling. It's just for normal people in the Middle East. Uh, yeah, and I think it's a good thing because like Western countries need need to protect itself from from like a lot of people who might go to the airport and decide to think about running away or like I don't know. Uh, it's it's high risk countries of people who might who might just not not want to return back after after going to to um, to a Western airport. Uh, so I knew that. It's really hard for to go to go. I mean, I don't have a, I don't need a visa for transit uh, in in in, uh, in European airports, and uh, I I decided that I'm going I'm going to have a trip around the world. I can't I can't have a transit from a Middle Eastern country, so I could have a transit from maybe a non Middle Eastern country, and the Egyptian passport rank is is very bad, so there is really few countries you could go you could go to without visa. And two of these countries are Ecuador and Jordan. Mm. So I went first to Jordan. And I went to Jordan because I wanted to know whether I'm, I'm not allowed to travel or not. Because I didn't want to have very expensive ticket to, to, uh, to South America. And, oh. and because of, you're saying you wanted to make sure that the Egyptian government hasn't put something on your passport that you wouldn't be able to try. Exactly. So, exactly. so you were testing and, and your then, passport before you actually spent money on the ticket. That's smart. Exactly. And then, and then the issue that was I had a plan B. And my plan B actually was very risky and was to go illegally, like through the Mediterranean or something. Mm. Because like, uh, so... If if I just lost this money and I, I couldn't have I couldn't have this trip through the Mediterranean, mm-hmm. so I had to be careful. I went to Jordan, spent about ten days in there, like as a tourist, and then from Jordan I went to Ecuador, and I spent another ten days as a tourist, mm-hmm. and then in my way back to Cairo, I went I went to through a transit in Frankfurt. Oh, okay, okay, and okay. There and there, I applied for asylum. I found a group of uh, federal 
police and asked them, I would like to apply for asylum. So they took me and they processed me. And I would like to say that I'm impressed with the German system. And I'm really, I'm really impressed with this process, with the system, with how professional everyone is. Hmm. It's just amazing. It's just yeah. amazing. I didn't expect that. Uh, yeah. And, and like, they were nice people. They were normal. They treated me normally. And it was, it was very, very, very smooth process, I guess. Uh, sorry, I'm taking so much of your time. You're t- N- Armin, uh, you're kidding, right? Like, no, 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 I'm glad that I'm talking to you. I'm glad that I'm sharing all of this with you. And just, it's just like, I just don't know how to, how to put it in word. How, how, like, how I'm, I'm, the pleasure that I feel for, for uh. <laughs> you having this conversation. I mean, you know what? You know what? I'll tell you something. Just go. To to uh to Axis Republic Cairo and you will see that my first post in there, my first post in there since 2017 was a, was part of a video for you where you're talking about uh, how you how you dream of uh um like a community uh, of of Axis people who are who meet their, each other in real life and form like social relationships and maybe maybe fall in love and marry and this was so inspiring this inspired me in ways you cannot even imagine and like this was i guess the first thing i shared in an acs public career you could you could go and and, and see that uh-huh. uh anyway yeah and i went to jordan i've met the very very interesting people in the hostel western people and it was the first time to actually interact with Western people in real life. And let, let me tell you that they are fascinating on intellectual level, on like, I, I mean, I could have smart conversations. I mean, so with, with normal people, they are, they are not particularly like in Egypt, like you had to, to find, you had to, you had to search for people to have conversations with, to be able to, to have like intelligent conversations with, but when it came to them, it was it was very easy. They are well informed. They're smart people, and they are kind and have a good heart. So I fall in love with Western people when I saw them. I was already in love because I've seen their support and the way that they stood for 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 what is right and the way they supported me and the when and the how they shed a light on our conditions in the Middle East and how they felt empathetic and how they really wanted the situation to change for us. So that was. The, like the first real encounter with Western people, but it was online. But th- back then it was in real life in Jordan. So I've made a lot of friends. Uh, I would say that uh, I've made a, a very, very nice Austrian friend. And he was trying to learn Arabic and he was very interested in our culture and in the Arabic culture. And he wanted to work on like um, something diplomatic or some like something in the relationship between the West and the Middle East. And it, he he was like very passionate and very very interesting, and uh, I've met also a French guy. He was very interesting guy, and uh, I would say that. I mean, when I say that, people people tend like I've like the most the nicest people I have met in in my travels were the French people. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's my experience. <laughs> uh, I mean, we that's just sweet. get along. I guess we just right. get along. Uh, like yeah, and we hang out. We have uh, visited uh, stuff uh, that is historic. We have visited churches in there. Mm. Uh, it was it was fun, but of course, all the time I was so afraid. Of course, all the time I, I was worried because I'm, I'm not sure what will happen. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna I'm going to do it or not. And if I didn't do it, if if I couldn't succeed, then what was going to happen to me? Like I'm mm. done. I would be done literally. If I got deported, if I got anything like that so it it was like yeah I, w- I was i was doing activities in there and i was meeting new people and i was getting to know the culture and practicing my english and my english was very important to practice uh because like at the airports at some points i had to i had to prove myself to be to be i had to, to converse in english with some people mm. in order for me to be able to to pass Mm-hmm. Uh, I, like they asked me questions in English about what I do for a living, why I'm here, what, stuff like that. And they might have not let me pass uh, or, or be on the plane uh, if, if, I, if I didn't hold a good conversation. So, so any, anyways, uh, yeah. No, no, go on. I, I'm just going to write down my question. Yeah. Okay, so I went, I went, I went to Jordan, and then after Jordan, I went to Ecuador, and I've met met a lot of nice people in there. I met a lot of German people. I 
I befriended them. We had a lot of fun. And then I went, I went back to Cairo. In, in my way, I went to Frankfurt. And I applied for asylum there, I told, as, a, I, as I have already told you. After applying for asylum, they have transferred me to a camp at the airport. And I should have stayed in this camp a couple of days, only a couple of days. But what happened is that, um, what happened is that, like, my passport was not signed. So I had to, like, in Germany, if my passport was not signed, then it's invalid document. I didn't know that. And in Egypt, they don't have, they don't put any value on us to, to sign the passport. Mm. So I had to stay a longer period in there in order for them to just do some. Can you some just life. like, just give it to me, I'll sign it? No? <laughs> no, you can't, you can't really do this. <laughs> Uh, so okay. yeah, I had to stay long, longer yeah. period. But I, I was like, this is was the camp that I told you that there was some trouble. But I was lucky that the mm. security team was very active in there, that the cameras was everywhere, and like I, I, I was lucky for that. Uh, then yeah, then I came here to this camp, and uh, yeah, my, my general remarks about it, like the G- German system is very, it's very good. German people are, I don't know, efficient. I would say. What did they uh, ask you about your atheism and what happens to you if you go back to Yeah, Egypt? let me tell you that they asked me about everything. Everything you can imagine. Yeah. Like, I, I, I elaborated on some of my sexual relationships. So <laughs> the interview was, was very, was very uh, yeah, was very true. Like, you, I've talked about stuff that you, I, can, I, I would be bashing <laughs> talking about. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was it was very, very, uh, very, very, uh, like everything you can imagine, I, I, I've talked about in this interview. Yeah, and I would like to point out something that uh, actually, uh, like German, German authorities or German government does not accept everyone to be a refugee in here. Like they, they have a very good vetting process and they, they yeah. actually choose people. Yeah, they do. And in the camp at the airport, I was, I was sitting in, there was a lot of people waiting for deportation. Some of them were even Egyptians. Mm. So it's not anyone. Anyone is not allowed. Like they try to actually do their best to allow people who are really in risk. Okay, really in risk. Like people who might just go in real trouble if you couldn't, if they couldn't go, if they couldn't like, uh, um, like find a sanctuary or find a home. Right. And and the thing is that I, I can I can't tell you about the story of a guy I met in Jordan, and the guy was working. He he's Syrian. He's a Syrian refugee in Jordan, and he was he is working, in, was working at the hostel, and he was talking to me about his experience in Jordan and how they don't give him any rights. Like he doesn't have vacations. He works about uh like fourteen hours a day, and the money they give him is barely barely could could satisfy his family's need. Like he doesn't have money. To even to even go out or do any any extra activity, so even even the conditions in there is inhuman, and the laws in there does not really respect human rights. So I'm very glad that in Germany human rights are being valued, are being and being respected. So this is this is a very very interesting thing, and like German people really should be proud, and and I I am proud, and I'm I'm enjoying it right now, and like I, can't, people- I can't have this conversation without fear. Of, of like deaths or threats or whatever this is luxury you don't have you don't have back then i don't have back then home so a, a lot of people are uh, i think i don't know if i think this is a major exaggeration but a lot of people keep saying that oh germany is lost germany is over they let in too many muslims it's going to become an islamic country pretty soon uh that's a, that is that's that's way out of are they are they like it, every time i hear i feel like the sky is falling in germany but then i hear from some people in german uh, in germany and they're like no everything is fine here i don't know who to believe and it doesn't seem to be very unbiased data I or could, analysis I, could tell you, I mean the thing is that the thing is that being a muslim does not mean that you're not being in danger or being an extremist even or have not an extremist in a way that you have done crimes, but extremists in a way that you have very extreme thoughts, uh, like you disrespect women or, or not the, just you don't take them as equal, you hate gays. Having these ideas does not mean that you're not in real danger. Like they are, they are, there are like most Arabs, yeah. most, most Middle Eastern people think this way. It's not, it's not exclusive to people who comes to Germany, like all of them. So does, this does not mean that you, they are not in real danger. 
So that's why I was emphasizing on that integration courses and courses to just re- like challenge these ideas that they have, change it in a way. Right. Like, but but, some, way but some people might say like, well, given that uh, people uh, they're coming and they're changing the culture, maybe there's some again, maybe they're saying that uh, what the, the reason why Germany is so good, the reason why I love Germany is because it wasn't in it, it didn't allow this kind of culture. And now by letting so many people in that they just have this culture. Again, this is the devil's advocate. Yeah, all, no, the I, things, I all the things that you love about Germany is going to be lost. In, in, um, in, in a sense, three. like I have, I have talked with, with German people and they have described me to, me to me stuff that is happening and how their freedoms and so, um, part of their freedoms are being restricted. Because like there is too much uh, people with different culture and different set of beliefs, and honestly, this is hard to break in, and this should not be the case. Like I uh, heard that pork is not allowed anymore in schools, like things like that. And I mean, I mean, this should not be the case. No, I mean, it should be the other way around. If you have more, like my my idea of of a better society is that the more res- the less restrictions you have, the less irrational restrictions you have the better the society is. Mm. And the thing that the Arabic culture and the Arabic society has a lot of irrational restrictions, crazy right. restrictions that does not really make any sense and only leads to lower quality of life. It's, it's the Islamic culture, not the Arabic culture. I would say there is no much difference right now. Like, it's Islamic. I mean, um, yeah, yeah but, but if you look at the restrictions, you see it in non-Arab Islamic societies, right? But and yeah. you don't and you don't yeah. see it in, you know, yeah. atheist Arab people. So I think I, it's mostly I, the Islam uh, factor, yeah. not the Arab yeah, factor. Yeah, that is a factor exactly. But right. in a way, like I, I, I conflated both. Yeah, I shouldn't have conflated both. But the thing is that, in a way, it's right now like in, in the Middle East, in, in Arabic countries, you can't really make this distinction. It's not there. It's not there. Like right. it's the same. Arab is Muslim. I know there are Christians. And even Christians... I mean, only lives, 20% of Muslims are Arab. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. But Arabs who are the inv- who, who invented this this whole thing. So <laughs> right. it's just like they are mostly more influenced by it than, than anyone else, I guess. Right. But yeah, you, you, you would find like there are Christians in Egypt and even Christians in Egypt are conservative. And they, they, in a way, in a lot of ways... Christianity they, is also a conservative... Well, because Christianity is also uh, conservative. <laughs> the thing is that they are not conservative in the in the, the Western same. sense. They right. are conservative whole new level sense, like whole new level of like they are conservative as Muslims. So yeah. in order for them to coexist, they had to adapt, and right. in order to adapt, they had to be conservative. But of course, they are still more re- liberal than than Muslims in, in Middle East, right. and actually in Egypt. The church has is having a very very nice nice community in comparison to uh, to the Islamic community. Like the church do activities. There is um, there is sometimes you could, like guys. There is no segregation. You know that segregation between sexes. Oh. It's it's not it's not. It's but not this very... is but this is this is what you this is how it's this is the evolution of the means right. When you're the minority, the PR front is is. You know, it's not a bad Muslim community. Every community, when you're the minority, you you lead with the PR front, with the, right. So if you look at Muslim, a lot of Muslim communities, for example, in United States, they are they have the most charming, charity focused, homeless feeding communities also as well, right? That's the main thing, right? But the no. but the Christian when when with Christians, if they have if you give Christians all the power, then you can see like how how. You know, devastating Christianity can be, but when you're a minority, you have to lead with the PR front. That's how it works. Yeah, Just, I agree. I agree. Right. I agree about that. I'm not. I'm not like praising Christianity in right, right, right. I'm just pra- praising some of their ac- social activities. Right. And honestly, they have they have a better uh, uh, society than even Muslims and even atheists right now. And I think we should learn a little bit from them because. Uh, they, they do activities. They do stuff that is that is like I'm envious as a Muslim. I don't get to to go to churches. I agree. This is something we need to learn from both Christians, Muslims, yeah. Jews, and everybody else. Because other than just building communities, taking 
looking after each other, right? I say when 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 a Christian is attacked somewhere in the world or is in jail because of their Christianity, 90% of the churches all around the world are going to be talking about it, right? Like they're going to be fundraising for it. They're going to be like, oh, there's Christians over there. Like, and rightfully so. Like I'm not, you know, good that yeah. they're doing that. If, if, if a Muslim is, if, so, if, the, if somebody go, is attacked by somebody because they're Muslims, I'm pre, every, every freaking mosque that I know of is going to talk about it, right? And they're going to try to bring support. And actually, to criticize a little bit, to, um, not a little bit, we criticize Muslims a, a bit on this because uh, they don't pay much attention to the discrimination against Muslims in China, right? Um, which is the biggest one right now, right? But they, they're mostly obsessed with, I mean, some of them do talk because about it. Because they don't know Chinese, because China is so far away and they don't know much about the culture, they don't know much, know much about Chinese right. people. I mean, so, when I mean when they, they, they're mostly focused about Israel on Muslims, United States against Muslims, white yeah. people against Muslims, but when China's against Muslims and they're putting them in concentration camps, you don't hear that much from Muslims. Again, to be fair, some of them are bringing attention to it, especially in Turkey, but not co relative to what they do when it comes. So it's an enemy that they don't, are not familiar with. I, the thing is that, yeah, because Ch China is very far, I mean, you don't hear Uyghur people or, or Muslim Chinese talking in the media. You, we don't right. see that in the media. We're not really exposed to this, to this part of the world that much. But, 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 but even, even if we criticize them, I just wanted to make the point that at, at least they do more than we do, right? Especially yeah, the I, Jewish community. They, they have been very efficient at protecting each other, right? And the Mormon community, right? We criticize them, but uh, because their ideas are shit, but they're organized. They look after each other. And the atheist community is sensitive, a lot of them, about looking after each other because they're like, oh, if we get organized, we're a religion. Like, no, that doesn't make you a fucking religion, okay? It's That's human. not the definition of a religion. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It just makes you human, like religion, <laughs> like religion. Right. Have invented this it doesn't invent it it probably they adapted it from from aerial uh, air, um preceding uh human values yeah exactly yeah. When, yeah. Did, when did when did when did when did religions took ownership over community like it, we, now every time we build a community we're a religion good job now you you sold um, com the concept of community to religion like you just you just giving it to them. Thank you so much for that. Like it's so st I don't understand. But okay, going back to your story, why did you why did you decide that you want to leave? Because you, the last part of the story when we left off in Egypt was that when the police came to your house, uh, you were a little bit relieved that they weren't arresting you. No, I mean this is not the last bit. Like actually, the stuff happened before that. Okay. Okay. I, I I would talk about it. like of course like as I've told you people started to, after the first show I seen people started to show support, and then I started to see the shows are going into like the, going viral. People started to share it. People started to talk about it. It was mind blowing for me, and then I've got invited to another show on uh, Dwight Bella. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's Excellent. like the Arabic version, mm. and after that. I knew that it's just a matter of time that before my family know about the whole thing and the death threats. So till, yeah. till this, they still didn't know? Until they, they didn't know. Even, it was okay. like, why would I tell them? And they didn't know. And uh, but Did nobody soon, like send it to them on you know, WhatsApp or something? Uh, yeah, somebody sent it. Like, somebody sent it to everyone, like, not just <laughs> to them. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, and I knew at this point that I need I need to leave home. It changes my govern my government. I my the governor rate change the go to another city, mm. uh, and like I, I've changed my hairstyle. I've just uh, cutted all of my hair back then, and yeah, and then and your your fa your fa uh, your family is religious. They are extremists, Armin. <laughs> uh, anyway, extremists. Uh, so yeah, you know what did they yeah. do when they found out? Uh, it was bad. Let me tell you this: it was very bad. I was I was like leaving the next day. I prepared everything. I found a job in another government, and I was like preparing my bag and everything. And then they came to me, and it was terrible. I mean, the, it, there was physical assault. 
Oh. So was imprisonment at home for a while, and uh, there was threats. Like what? we're gonna, yeah, there was threats. Like uh, one of one one uh, of the family members is a police officer. So it's like we're gonna put you in prison if you did not go back to Islam. And we're not just gonna do this. We're gonna also hurt your friends. Hurt your and friends. Yeah, how your atheists, those who oh. encouraged you. Ooh. It's really easy. I mean, they are atheists in Egypt. It's really easy to hurt them. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, and and uh, and it was like that. So so I was I was in a very very tough situation. And are, I they, are, you still, I could... are you in touch with them at all after you left? No, 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 not no in touch. Of course, like the, nobody the in your very... family. No, they are cruel people. No, they're cruel people. Uh, I mean, it's very it's very unfortunate. It breaks my heart. But but uh, oh my God. but it just like maybe maybe after after a lot of years maybe uh, I don't know. Anyways, no, no better. Yeah, this... I had I I mean like psychologically I, I just I just really can't deal with it. You know. Uh, Is there I, anything more than religion that divides family like this? Like I, I, I think, haven't. I don't think so. Uh, mm. I mean it's crazy. I mean it's it's very bad situation. It's very bad. Um. I mean, yeah, the love, the love that parents have naturally for their children is such a powerful force that it, it takes such a powerful disease for it to be able to break something so powerful apart. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. The, like the bond is usually so strong that it that to be able to destroy that, it only takes religion. Like only religion can do that much damage. To, to, to destroy such a powerful bond between children and their own parents. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, um, it's a disease in a way, yeah. Mm. Uh, and it's heartbreaking to see that happening. And, uh, but this is, it is what it is. Like, they considered me an evil, and I shamed the family, and they were protecting, protecting the society and protecting Islam from me. So, uh, I, I was there and I didn't have a lot of choices back then mm. and I had to comply with them. I was like, mm. okay, I'm going to be back. And they actually, uh, uh, had, I had an Azhar, a, a sheikh from Azhar, an imam, Islamic yeah. cleric that, that is, was there, like his duty was to brainwash me to be a Muslim. Oh, guy. so your, your family brought in a, sh- a sheikh from Al yeah, Azhar yeah. University, but which yeah. is, by the way, the, it's the leading Sunni. Um, uh, university or whatever, um, t- uh, quote unquote university in the world, uh, center center of Islamic Sunni Islamic thought in the world, which is in Egypt, and it has a lot of power in Egyptian politics. For people that don't know, it has an influence on Egyptian law, it has a, a lot of influence on Egyptian policies, and they're even get, they're getting more powerful. For all the people that thought like, oh, without Muslim Brotherhood, CC is secular. No, <laughs> right? Like he is not that. That was a myth, apparently. Uh, but and yeah, go. On. Yeah, our government right now doesn't have a theocratic agenda, but right. they like religion because it's a good tool to control. It's a good tool to govern. So yeah. that's why they supply them with their money, with money and preserve religion. And because they're giving more they authority and more power to Al Azhar University, and and they're and they're and they're you know, right. I mean, they are striving because they have took down all of their competitors. Right. Like the Muslim Brotherhood are now in prison. Right. Yeah. So without the Muslim Brotherhood, the university... Uh, how do you say it? Al-Azhar? Is that how you say it? Because I always say yeah. Al-Zahra. I always think Al-Zahra because I know the name came from Zahra. Because Egypt Egypt used to be Shia it, before it became Sunni. Do yeah, you know that? It came from Zahra. Fatima Zahra. Fatima Zahra. Uh, yes, yes. She yeah, was a daughter of... Uh, of uh, which well, a holy, holy to Shias, but not to Sunnis. Sunnis, yeah, well, Sunnis, yeah. Sunnis love Aisha. Um, Shias hate Aisha. They love Fatima al Zahra, right? But go on. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah, it was initially Shia, but then Egypt became Sunnah. So now it's it's one of the most Islamic organization in the world. Right, right. And yeah, and actually both Sheikh, like I had, I had to deal on TV shows with two Imams, and both of them were from Azhar. Right. So. I yeah, and then uh, I had to deal with this sheikh, and I had to convince him that I'm a Muslim. 
and I I I spent this this year this year becoming becoming a Muslim and uh, you're faking faking it. faking yeah. yeah faking I I used to lead them in prayers and stuff oh. like that <laughs> oh no uh, yeah I was just interesting very interesting um, oh but God. yeah I knew I knew that this is not very sustainable situation and you, you could you could know that my job opportunities was not very very good too because like a lot of people knew me even my atheist like i had an atheist friend that had a company he he well, i had an offer in this company like any time i would like to come to work i, I would go there but not no more like the no offer more. is not because because the thing is that you want risk you want risk a problem in the the work environment you want risk a client seeing things that you have someone uh, that is atheist and then run away or uh, or one of my friends or colleagues figure out my history or my past and then make trouble so no work no job owner like would 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 be would be uh, interested in having such sort of of trouble so being an atheist is, uh, and public atheist or public about your atheism it's very isolating and and it could hurt you in so many ways wow yeah so i pretended to be to be uh, an atheist and uh, sorry to be to be a muslim and actually back then i used to i used to um, have money and they took the money uh, and i they did took the I money. Was so st- yeah I, I was so stupid not not to put my money in a bank because like i don't know i i used to buy these gold coins because i was so afraid of uh, inflation because in Egypt in 2016 our can- currency got devalued like they oh. divided the currency by 4 like the the US dollar uh, used to worth 5 Egyptian pound and now it worth about 20 or something now 70 anyways wait so your parents I, just came out and took your money they took everything like they imprisoned me <laughs> so i i was very helpless at this point yeah, i i was very helpless and then i i talked to uh, some people and some people suggested that GoFundMe thing and some people and Troy uh, took control of the whole situation and made it come true and you of course advertised about it and Sam Harris retweeted and I found a lot of love and a lot of compassion and support from the atheist community all over the world. I made it in English and there was a reason to make it in English and I did not actually advertise about it in any Arabic sites or anything because uh, like it would have been very risky it was already risky I was so afraid while doing it because like it was very fragile situation it was a risky situation but I had to take the chance I couldn't just continue living this way it, it wasn't alive and given the death threats and a lot of people that already like hate me for just being for just existing you know so I knew that it, I, could, I, can, I couldn't really survive in Egypt. I couldn't have a normal life anymore. I couldn't have safe life in Egypt. So I, I, I knew that and I started to take steps in order to try to leave. And one of the steps was the GoFundMe and people so, was very supportive. Like in a week, uh, all, the goal was reached mm. and uh, it was intended to help me to it helped me to travel, helped me with the visa expenses, helped me with the lawyer expenses, helped me like to adjust when I come in here. And uh, then when it when the goal is got reached, uh, it wasn't. Yeah, I, I would like to point out I was making it in English. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to this point. And the thing is that um, the Egyptian society generally and Arabs generally are not are not very uh, open to the Western media and the English media. So uh, not not having like making an English con- content is not really very influential in, influential in Egypt. Mm. So it was it was kind of uh, kind of safe a little bit in comparison oh, to the shows that, w- right. that were in Arabic. I mean, if you know of Sharif Gaber, of course, like he's a famous yeah. atheist, and now he's hunted by the government and hunted by people, and there is a lot of people after him. And he actually made his 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 campaign in Arabic and. He suffered for that even more because the, there is now charges against him for having money from unknown sources or something. Huh. Like for some reason, this is a crime in Egypt. I, I don't know. I'm not sure about the law. But yeah, I, I mean, it's just there was a reason. That's why I made it in English. And I tried to, to isolate it from any Arabic sites. And, and I was lucky that nobody picked on it and just decided to, um, decided to translate it. I would have been... I mean, maybe I would have been accused to be traitor. I would have been accused to be 
things that is that is like terrible. I would have even more su- suffered more. Uh, so it was even risky having this one. It was very risky, but I, I couldn't find any other way. Mm. Uh, and then after that, um, I, I I tried to have like apply for the visa as I've told you. Like applied for a visa for the United Kingdom. I applied for a visa for the Netherlands, and none of them worked. And then I came up with the, with the idea of uh, transit transit asylum thing and uh, traveling the world to do that. Right. Uh, so so, what happens if you go back? If you if you were denied, I mean, they have threatened me. I ah, I I didn't tell you. Like I was not just faking that I was a Muslim. I I was I was faking like I was. I had a lot of restrictions upon my life. I couldn't I couldn't stay up late. Oh. I couldn't go anywhere. They don't know where I am. Right. I couldn't. It was very hard for me to even meet my atheist friends. Right. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't have like an a, a normal separated life. And the conditions were like, yeah. If if you didn't if you didn't comply, we're going to hand you to the police because we cannot we can't we can't really uh, handle this kind of evil around. Like so, yeah. So I might I might find them now having a lawsuit against me. I might find them like trying to find me and just lock me up again. And of course, like given that Egypt is already not safe because there is a lot of people who knew the way right. I looked, they really didn't like me. So. Uh, people were like, if I met you in the streets, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And you know that. Of course, you're very familiar, I guess, with that. So, um, so it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not safe. I, I, would, I, I wouldn't even like to think or, or consider the scenario or my, what might happen to me if I went back. You, so, you, mentioned, you, you mentioned Sheriff. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I always she, thought it was Jobber. People say Gobber or Jobber? Uh, in Egypt, we should say Gaber. Uh, you could say Jabber, and it's fine too. Gaber. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned his case. Do you think he has a hope of getting out? Honestly, I don't really know. I mean, I mean, Sharif. The thing is that I w- I was lucky to have friends to advise me when to stop talking. Like you know, I oh. I did not. I didn't talk a lot afterwards. Hmm. And and I was lucky to have friends advise me for that because if if I was if I kept talking, then it would have been counterproductive. I wouldn't have been able to actually leave. Do you think Sharif made a mistake by talking more? He pushed he pushed a lot and and he's very brave for doing so. Hmm. But and it's very unfortunate what happened because it's not just hurting Sharif; it's also hurting the whole community because people are now afraid. And I was, I was very, I, I, I always considered that. I always considered I don't want to get killed because, like, I, of course I want to live, but I'd say at this point when I was in the shows, I was very selfless, I guess, in a way. I mean, I was, I was selfish in a way that I really wanted my community to be better, but I was also knowing that I'm risking my life and I was doing glad, doing it gladly. But, but the thing is that I always, I always had this, this in my mind. If something happened to me, this will have very negative influence on people. So, so Sharif's well, case looks very hopeless, huh? Like, to, I truly don't know. I mean, I really hope he might figure out a way. Mm. Uh, they wouldn't. I, I would say that it's really, it's really hard for the government to let him leave in a legal way. Even yep. if he got, like, he's trying to acquire a, a foreign, a foreign citizenship. And uh, I don't think that he's going. I actually talked to some friends, some some diplomatic friends about Sharif and. The, like they have, they have replied with, we don't want to trouble with the Egyptian government, and it's it's understandable because their work will get restricted if they had trouble with the government. Because so they they don't really, and he tried, he tried, he have gone to a lot of embassies, he's he's tried a lot of ways, and there was no hope. You think his case is too high profile right now, um, for and the government can't just let it go because it's too high profile. I would say they would be really afraid of the things that he's gonna say about them when he leaves. Mm. So I mean, he 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 really ha- he has a lot of experience with prison and with national security and with stuff right. like that. So I think he has a hope. He has a good like he might be able to leave illegally in a way. I think I was considering to leave illegally if if I found that 
I was I was not allowed to travel. I, I, I my plan B was to go through the Mediterranean. It wasn't it would have been risky, but it was right. better than life in so, so what's your case looking now? Like do you you've been approved, you you everything looking good for not you? Not yet. I'm waiting. Yeah, I mean the process, I'm waiting for the court I'm waiting for the court decision. Mm. Might be in the next within the next three months, I guess. Uh, anything I'm, people could do to help to make it more? Is there anything we can? I guess do? we cannot. We cannot really influence. Uh, we cannot really um, try to affect like a court. I have faith in the German justice. I have faith in the German legal system, mm. and like I, I, I deserve that. I deserve protection. And they know what 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 might happen to me if I went back. And they know that it's really hard for LGBT people to live in Egypt. And they know they know everything. They very understanding. Yeah. And they are very, very well educated about these conditions. Right. So yeah, I, I have total faith that they are like they are going to um have have um I don't know. They're going have, to you cons- have you considered but, bearing the Quran and camera just to make sure that they, they know what's gonna uh, happen I to you? Yeah. Consider it. You know who I'm talking I mean, about? Right? I know a friend, a dear friend of mine have done that. Yeah, yeah, what's his do you know who Omar, I'm talking about? Yeah, Omar, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were gonna send they were gonna send him back. <laughs> yeah, he burned like I'm an atheist guys, I, I don't belong there and he just burned the Quran and sent it to the I've, police there. I, yeah, I watched that video. I've never seen anybody burn the Quran in such a respectful manner. He was like, I am now about to burn the Quran. I am now stepping on the Quran. And he steps <laughs> it very calmly. <laughs> and then, oh and then he's, he sends that video to the Egyptian government and on Facebook. And he sc- and then it shows scene on Facebook, right? On the Facebook page of the police. And he screenshots that just to show the German, like, look, they've seen my video. Now you can't say no, no, it was in Germany. Where was it? Uh, was uh, it North? Maybe Switzerland or Belgium. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah, but it was like there, now you can be sure. So, do you think that have you, you considered? You say you considered that? I'm considering. I'm totally <laughs> considering if something happens. I hope I does not. I do not need okay. to do this. Right. But actually, like, yeah, I don't want to also to break the the uh, break the German law because I don't think I'm not sure if this would be illegal illegal in Germany. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that uh, would be that, a, that's the that last that, measure. He's a legend, and like people know his story and know what happens, and it's just a legend for doing that. Yeah, he, because yeah, yeah he, he he wasn't real. He wasn't real. Uh, it's risk of going back. He's a he's a a journalist, I guess. And I mean, he and it probably worked. after he burned the Quran, they're like, what? I guess we have to keep you now. <laughs> he angered a lot of people in there, and. Uh, I mean, sending him back would have been a terrible, terrible thing to do. Yeah, but he, but he was like, you know, if you send me back, I'm going to die. So what do I have to lose? I'm going to burn the Quran because I'm going to get ordered to get killed. So I might as well just do this as a last. And it worked. You know, imagine if this becomes the norm. Imagine if I, I, <laughs> imagine if the, the first like refugees come from the Middle East and the first thing they do is burn a Quran. Like <laughs> a, a Muslim would never do it. Let me tell you that a Muslim would never. I don't think that a Muslim would ever do this. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a good test. It's a okay, good. good. That should yeah. be the test. If you really want to yeah. say burn yeah. a Quran, yeah, I mean, uh, it, should, it could be. It could be. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, I mean like. Plant a tree, plant a tree, burn a cor- because of uh, carbon emissions, right? All right, so the first, you at this, the, the requirement should be plant a tree, burn a Quran at the same time, and that that's the, that's the requirement for you getting it. The See, thing is that church. Yeah, we, we're in high risk. <laughs> we, like they know that in in the Middle East, our rights we don't have rights. We know that they know that we are in high risk, and the thing is that like we are a force for a change. I guess atheist people right now in the Middle East are forced for good at change, for making the Middle East a better place. And unfortunately, in the Middle East, we're not we're not going to get the chance to actually spread our wings and and do the things that we do. And let me tell you that most most influential atheist people who are who are like actually doing big changes uh, in in the Middle East and big changes in Egypt. In, in the community and attracting people and changing mindsets are live live in in western countries right like we have we have very famous guy called Masri Mulhed he's is very, very like literal translation to his name is Egyptian atheist really? and, and yeah, Mulhed. 
Yeah. Yeah, and and he he is he he he's doing like a very very effective things and very effective job. Ahmed Abdul Samad, he lives here in Germany and he has like his his show and he's one one of the most. Are you gonna meet him? I hope. I wish it would be an honor. Like I've seen his show; it's very intellectual, very smart. And, and he's anti is anti Islamic reform like I am, which I like. That's why I like him as well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like personally, when it comes to Islamic reform, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I I just can't. I, I I am I'm pro pro like eradicating Islam, but I wouldn't say that I'm anti reforms because like I am anti reform, but that's a different argument. I'll talk. To, um, uh, we'll have that discussion another time because if you open that can of worms right now, I, there's going to be a. We already went for two hours. That would be another two hour already discussion. Two hours that went like whoa. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Right. So so let let's 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 bring this to the you know to a conclusion because I, nobody's going to watch this if we go any longer than two hours, right? So <laughs> so so. What, what's what's next for you? Like, what where do you if once you settle in Germany, hopefully it works. What are your plans? What are you gonna do? I'm not sure yet, to be honest. For but sure. I would like to have in the like I would like to be in social media, like I don't know, commenting on events, uh, saying my opinions. I would like in the future to have a show in Arabic. Hopefully, I manage to do this. Maybe also I'll have a show in in German or English. Okay. And um, I, I would like. When it comes to the Arabic show, I I'm, I have a lot of ideas about it, and I think I would like to focus on um, on globalization a little bit, on like understanding of different culture, because mm. Arab people have very very poor understanding to the Western culture, to the Western people, and they think they have very a lot of misconceptions, mm. and I would like to clarify this, and maybe if I do, if do, if I done that in the process. This might change him a little bit, making their make him more open, make him adapt certain values, certain certain stuff that made the West successful and made the West what it is. So right. that when when they come here, when they come here, whether they came to work or whether they came to to whatever refugees, they they would they would have have value. They would value the community in here. They would understand it and they would they would mm. value everything that is happening and they would understand why it's happening and why it is what it is. And like it, it wasn't easy. Like people here, like you have said earlier in the show, have spent a lot of time fighting for their rights, and bloodshed happened, and sacrifice has been made. Right. So, uh, so I would like I would like to host Western people who actually speak Arabic, mm. and uh, and I would like them to bro- broadcast themselves. They would broadcast mm. their ideas about everything, about life, about about social life about politics about religion about whatever and maybe in the process they they would just fall in love with the western culture as i do well, the, by the way i don't call it western culture i call it enlightenment values right enlightenment because and enlightenment because values, because, yeah. because if you keep calling it western culture it seems like the west owns these values first of all it doesn't right um, I mean, look at it went to other countries and well, like other countries benefited from these values. Like, look, Japan, for okay. example, right? Okay. Um, but um, and also the reason why I don't like to call it Western values is because the Enlightenment values that came out of you know 1800s in Europe benefited the entire planet. But there are many other Western values that also came out of Europe that didn't benefit the planet. Like Nazism is also a Western value. Uh, communism came from Marx, which is, a, oh, uh, you know, yeah. German. Okay. Ger- um, German. Yeah. Like, communism is a yeah. Western values. Nazism is a Western values. Uh, but oh. I, I, there, are, there are specific values that we're talking about, which is the Enlightenment values, right? So Yeah, that's what, what I mean exactly. Yeah, yeah. Speech, respecting human rights. Right. Uh, Due process. Justice. Due process, due liberty, process. Stop, all right. of that. Yeah. Yep. And and exactly. th- those are and and uh, again, if we if we stop calling it Western values, I think more of the world will accept it and adapt it because we don't claim we don't act like the West claims ownership over it, right? That's why I like to call them enlightenment. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. maybe I I've just called it this way because they made it because they the first people who came up with it, I guess. But, right. 
the, yeah. the first people that popularized most, it and talked about it in the most advanced yeah. way possible. I, uh, I mean, some I of these see. ideas also came from, I mean, again, that's the West as well, Roman and Greek as well. But but the first people that like it was Voltaire and Rousseau, yeah, and th these are these are the people that uh, happen to be in Europe, and they are the people that. That's, yeah, it's too broad. I understand. It's too broad, and it might not indicate what I what I really want to indicate. Yeah, yeah. It, so but but like, but I also appreciate the fact that people say like we have to give credit to the people that invented them as well like why are you not giving credit to the west well because i don't want to give credit to all the west i want to give credit to the people like give credit to freaking Vol voltaire right like not yeah. not the entire yeah again indiv I mean, yeah, individualism I, I would say voltaire if voltaire lived in islamic environment right now he might i don't know what would happen to him but he wouldn't have thrived that's for sure right uh so yeah i mean I agree. It's more specific and it's better, and it, it would be more acceptable to a lot of people. I understand, yeah. Yeah. even Western peoples themselves. Yes. Right. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Okay. So, where can people find you? I have Facebook account. I have Twitter account. What, and what should people search for to find you? Okay. That to you. Uh, I mean, what's your Twitter? You could put it in link. Uh, my I'll Twitter? put a link to the description, but for some people that are just listening on a podcast without checking... Okay. Uh, my was... Twitter is at Muhammad Hisham and uh, M, zero, not O, actually, okay. H-A-M-E-D, uh, Hisham in capital, M, M in capital also, and L H in capital, uh, Hisham H-I, uh, no, not I, one, H-1, S-H, um, A-M, I guess. AM. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll put a link in the description. Should I put uh, to just Twitter or Twitter and Facebook? Yeah, put both. It would put be, both. be fine. Okay. Um, anyways, this was really fascinating. I could go on for another two hours, but I know nobody's gonna watch this if I if I go on for four hours. But this was this was fascinating. Uh, but stay on. I'm gonna just tell you, uh, ask you a few other things uh, once I stop the recording. But again, this uh, for now. This is th thank you so much uh, uh, for for agreeing to do okay. this. It's a pleasure to me to meet you. And I mean, I just don't know. It's honor. I mean, you have been all my, I'm, I'm a fan since long ago. You have been always an idol for me, uh -huh. an inspiration, true inspiration. And like <laughs> seeing you right now and talking with you and you're just such amazing, humble, interesting person. And like, <laughs> I, mean, I love, I truly love you. And I'm a big <laughs> fan. And thank you for everything you have done to the community. And thank you for everything you are doing the community and you have you are very effective and you truly changed my life and i'm sure that you have changed a lot of other people's oh. lives and thank, thank you for that and keep oh. doing what you do keep it up you're amazing thank you thank you thank you atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.